You're listening to the world famous White Roof Radio, Wolfcast number 626, recorded July 18th, 2017. Tonight brought to you by CravenSpeed.com, MotoringStripes.com, and now Motoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style. It's on Motoring.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's DB in Arizona with a brand new episode of the world famous White Roof Radio. Um, not going old school like we did last time, although thanks for listening everybody, that was really awesome. Todd and I had a great time doing that show. Uh, we have a few more people tonight uh, joining us tonight as always. My good friend Todd Pearson from MotoringStripes.com. Todd, say hi. I'm here and uh, mostly sober. Sweet, I think. Um, our, our good man, the ch- head mechanic, uh, their good reverend Mr. Chad Miller from Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com is here with us as well. Hello. Beautiful. And as a special treat, uh, Gabe's here. Gabe, say hi. It is It is an immense pleasure. Wow, look at that. Immense pleasure. It's going to be a big show for you guys. So a big show. Huge show. I had to reel these guys in. Go over, check out Black Roof Radio. We had some really good stuff in Black Roof. We got some Black Roof Radio exclusives. Stuff that you're not going to hear about for like a couple more weeks on the regular internet. Just click over to the Patreon for- page. Trust me. For just 50 cents a day, you too can make all your ear pleasures for 50 cents a day. Yes, and you can hear Gabe say a curse word. Uh-huh. Good job. No. I, think we, oh, yes. I, think we, I think we all cursed in that particular <laughs> sure show. We did. Just click back over. All you have to do, gang, there's a link over at uh, White Roof Radio. Click on the Patreon link over there. And that'll take you over to the Patreon Clubhouse. Kick in like 50 cents, click in like a buck a show, and you get access to Black Roof Radio and anything else that I find along the way that I want to sneak out to you guys only. It doesn't go in the main feed, anything like that. It's really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. There's a little message board over there, too. It's a lot of fun. You guys should check it out. Go over there. Patreon.com forward slash White Roof Radio. Yes. So tonight we are going to talk about um, the new signature mini that's coming and gabe has some more stuff to go about with that we are going to talk about some mini marketing stuff which god knows we just can't help ourselves there which is going to be a lot of fun gabe's got an update on the motoring file clubman plus other things i I don't think he's actually had sex with the car yet gabe have you (laughs) do you say with the car um it's an inanimate object that's actually impossible okay good i was gonna say with the car or in the car (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, no come uh, it's another show. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get to all that here in just a minute. Plus, who knows what else? Uh, just gonna I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of a wacky night. We will lose Chad partway through the show, so don't uh, anybody fret about that. We are it will happen. But before we get started, but you know what? The what? flight keeps getting delayed farther and farther. So right now the ETA is one a.m. around <laughs> Detroit grounding time. So I may be the whole, the whole thing. So. Awesome. Well, before we get started, because we do have a lot of show tonight, let's go ahead and uh, pay some bills. Let's remind you guys about one of the fine sponsors here underneath the white roof. Our friends over at OutMotoring.com. I want you to go check out check this out. You go over there, and I keep telling you guys OutMotoring. He's like your new parts desk, right? He has all the things that you need to fix your mini DIY guys. You know, all the weird little the, the little clips and the plugs and the the body panels and the door handles and the the little motors and tools and whatnot. Yeah, tools factory mini tools they start prices start at like 5.95 for the specialized tools that you need to work on your car available now where outmotoring.com you would have found out about that too if you were already on the outmotoring.com email blast which you want to be on anyway because when you get the outmotoring email the first thing at the very top almost all the emails it's a five percent discount code your own for the month brand new so you never have to pay full price you always get five percent off plus all the other updates retrofit armrest for r60 r61 boom you want the uh, old school armrest for the r55 6 7 8 and 9 yeah he's got it for you all the armrests in fact not just some but all of them license play frames uh dipsticks tools plus all the things for your you know for your person the the hats the shoes the the shirts the watches all the mini personalized stuff available for you over at motoring.com not only that but a growing collection of aston martin parts because well i don't know i'm thinking aaron's actually i think he's saving up to get an aston martin <coughs> they're, uh, they're fairly affordable on the uh, used <coughs> he actually already has one. Oh, he does Let's see if that explains it. Yes, he yeah. does. He it's, does have uh, one, and yeah, hence, hence the parts. Hence the parts. Yeah, I've, I, 
See, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure he, he stops knowledge. the parts just because he needs them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been told it's kind of like the poor man's Austin Martin, but I I'm, cannot confirm or deny this. You poor know, man's what? Aston Martin is an <laughs> poor, Aston Martin. Poor dude. man's. Hey, 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 uh, Chad. I think any I think anybody who has an Aston Martin is a rich man. Yes. Even yeah, if you maybe, got it for maybe 10 rich grand. in the ways, rich in the ways that matter. Yes, Gabe is one hundred percent correct. Rich in the ways that matter, and that, of course, is our man Aaron over at Outmotoring, Outmotoring dot com. Mini performance, speed, and well, armrests. That's Outmotoring dot com. And this is where I play the news music. And can I say before we get started, because we didn't add this to the, to the rundown, but did you see? Did anybody see the uh, the latest Stimsa race that uh, Mini was? Part of in the in the uh, continental sports. The sport. last the week the one that just happened those last weekend that passed. I, they, I missed the, the last one two they races. Third. I, the I, one where they ended up third. That I was actually last watched. Weekend, so I missed. Race. I missed that race. And uh, just so let me recap it for you here. Many should have won that. They were leading going into. There's about I want to say there was five minutes or so left. And uh, in a corner, the the second place Porsche um, took a corner really tight. Yeah. And. They were they were well over. I mean, the car was uh, at speed would have bounced, taken quite a leap in the air over the uh, the rumble strip. Okay. Okay. And they were really they were inside the mini, and basically took the mini out, forced them across the track, and uh, they went from first to third. And even the announcers in, in the, uh, on the on the IMSA coverage there of the race were saying how chances are the Porsche is going to have to go back. You know, this is what happened. This was not clean. All of this, and there were words exchanged after the race. Wow. Let's say between the teams, so it was uh, it was not cool. And I, I say, watching this, I've watched a lot of racing in my life. Um, yeah, in any other division or series or whatever, the the Porsche would not have uh, been allowed to win that race. Wow. And and many, wow, many wow. at least would have been second. Now I have to watch the not- recap. If not won this race, it was it was pretty shitty. If you uh, if you ask me, wow. so that was that's the, a technical racing term too. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was a, it was a shit salad with crap croutons. How's that? <laughs> there it Damn. is. <sighs> but anyway, I just had to put that out there. And if anybody who's watched it or was probably completely angry, especially mini fans, yeah, who were like, "This is just uncalled for." It was not clean at all. I mean, mini was was uh dominating the st class um for the second week in a row right? yeah they yeah. felt really good i i yeah i'd heard through the grapevine that they felt really good about this race yeah. um as you know like the last one so yeah that, that's a bummer hey well lime rock is this week uh coming up this saturday so they'll get a chance to uh redeem themselves and and uh let's hope there's no vengeance towards the the porsche team <laughs> yeah <laughs> but who knows it's racing yeah, and don't forget, guys, if you want to watch those races, they, they are usually broadcast over at IMSA.com. If you click on the How to Watch link, it's, uh, it'll show you right there. And usually when there's a live race happening, there's actually a link to watch live. So you can actually yes. just put it up on your computer, your laptop, your iPad, whatever. Just stream it to your TV. doesn't matter. But IMSA.com will get you taken care of. And, and it's then actually it's a really they, good They feed. rerun it a few times on Fox Sports 1 oh, um, if you have that on your cable provider. Yes, or and if you don't have cable like me and you've got the Sling app, FS1 is available in the Sling app and it's like 15 bucks a month. There you go. There you go. Done and done. Um, awesome. Okay, cool. Since we're, since we're on MotoringFile.com, let us talk about the new entry-level Mini Cooper signature line that was uh, announced this last weekend. Because this one was blown up on the internet. Uh, Facebook was, like, hating on this car and loving on this car. Well, I wouldn't say, actually, car. I don't know if it, yeah, I think it was hating and loving. A little bit of both. I, I saw, a lot of, people, I saw a, lot, a lot of love for this car. Of People were like, oh, yeah, but then when... Here's what happened. There was a lot of uh, love at first, but then yeah. when people realized it was only a $900 savings, right. they were kind of like, wait a minute. You can probably walk into a dealer and get at least $900, if not more, off a well, but, whip car. But that's, I think, Todd, like, that's on top of it. Like, I think that's the thing. Like, we have to assume yeah. that that's, this is on top of it. Right, right. right. It's, an, it's an attitude, and I get it. And, and I understand the point of it. Uh, it it's trying to say... But but here's the thing that we've been talking about for so long is, are minis too expensive? Right. Uh, is this a response to 
the people who say minis are too expensive? Well, so I think here, here's here's the thing. I mean, you know, you, the reality is there are uh, clubmen at Baron Mini for seven thousand dollars off the list right now. <laughs> wow, um, Gabe's listening to the show. Nice. No, I I, I don't know that. I just, I know that because of Instagram. Uh, oh, you know, okay. like I think that's uh, so. Yeah. I think I made I'm the one are, who made those. I, I made those stickers, by the way. And I guarantee you, there is uh, at least one mini at Baron Mini in Kansas City. If it's still there, that is. Um, are you ready for this? I need a drum roll. I need a timpani. Got it. Nine thousand dollars off. Yikes! So a black. I, I don't. So I don't think that's a. I don't think that's common. That that type of gaudy number. But I think it is. As we've all said, and we predicted for years, all of us. Yeah. Um, mini will eventually become much like the rest of the automotive industry, which is. There's MSRP, and then there's the price you walk out the door with. Right, right. And that is, while it's not quite like a Chevy where, you know, certain time of the year I can get 15K off, right. you know, like a truck or something, it's still, there's money to be had. There's money on the hood, if you will. And and I think that um, that is becoming more of a reality in in the mini world. And is, so, and, you know, here, here's my question. Is that, a good or a bad thing for many, it's not great. Right. For many, they'd love to sell every car for sticker. For you and I, isn't that a pretty good thing? Well, there's well, two. There's two a, aspects of it. Yeah, there's two. When aspects, I walk out the door for a deal, because we get a good awesome. deal on the car. When I but, own, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, when I own the car for a while, and depreciation hits a little harder than I want it to. Yeah, not so good. Right. It's which it's it, not what, so good. I mean, and that's something that I've just recently experienced, which is but why it's I, also you know. It's already but it's all go ahead. It, it's good for you, DB, because you bought a used car that for, for a good value. But it's not good for people with a used mini who want to, you know, want a value in it. They want a good residual. Oh, dude, I when I, 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 I lost the, my ass on the previous mini, though. Right. And here's here's a, something that I'm just going to throw this out there. Also, I read an article this week, the first quarter of this year, by the way, the average price, a third of new car buyers are upside down on the car that they're trading in. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. a full third of these. Of those buyers... I'm surprised it's so low. Yeah, the, of those buyers who are upside down in their cars, get this, the average amount of money they're upside down is $5,000. It's just over, mm-hmm. it's just a little over $5,000 upside down in a car. And which, if that means it's the average, there are people who are probably $10,000, and there are people yeah, who I was, are I was 2000 seven. I was seven, so... So CDB, you're you're right in there. You know, you're you're swinging the average up a little bit. Right. But that's a big deal. So that is that is case number one. Case number two is that here's another scary statistic from the statistic from the first quarter of this year of car sales in the U.S. is that the average car loan now, the average car loan in the first quarter of this year was get this, sixty nine months. Okay. Yeah. That uh, is insane isn't yeah, it, it isn't is. it so the ad- that is insane yeah and that's up from um i, I want to say they said from 2013 it was 59 months okay and now we're at 69 which is a huge leap the, right. the biggest leap in a short period of time i think yeah well, so I think I think it's it's pretty clear that we're we're inching towards a a bubble bursting. We talked about this. I, I, I don't think we need to go over it. I think here's where my head's at, though. Like we're looking at a car uh, in, in a mini that hasn't seen value pricing before. Nope. Um, not quite like this in the United States, right? And and again, I, I come back to what are we as mini enthusiasts? want you know do we want this to be a a premium car that is is not seen very often do we want it to be kind of a niche, a niche product or do we want it to be sold you know to higher sales you know see them all over and be, just be more prevalent and you know i think many will never quite get there but i mean clearly they're trying to generate more you know more volume right and i mean from my perspective i don't know if that's a bad thing you know, they're trying to generate well, more volume and they're trying to do it um, in, a, in a way that is still trying to be um, consistent with their pricing structure. Yeah. And, and it appears in the United States. And this is weird because every time we throw this out there and we talk about how many USA is struggling, 
everybody that the first statement out of people's mouth is, but wait, sales are really good in the rest of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And, and Gabe, your theory is that the price of fuel is at kind of an all time low, which is driving. Well, that's not my theory. I mean, it's most people's theory in terms of pricing. Another article I read this week, and I think I posted this over on the Slack channel, is that not only are gas prices kind of at a historic low, but also in addition to that, um, the demand for fuel in the U.S. in the last year is at an all-time low. So that alone, it's not just the price of gas is cheap. You would think that the demand would be up because that's the mm-hmm. process, the way it goes of supply and demand. But mm-hmm. since it's so cheap, the demand is also at an all-time low. So that tells me one of two things are happening here. People are either driving more fuel-efficient cars, which is definitely true. The cafe standards mm-hmm. go up have been going up every year for the last 10 years. Or number two, people are driving fewer miles, which I think is also true with the advent of, of things like Uber and Lyft and ride-sharing programs. Um, they're, they're doing that. In addition to, there's a third wild card there, a lot of people are driving active hybrids now, and urban drivers are getting 100 miles a gallon on these act, you know, plug-in hybrids, if you will, uh, you know, who don't do a lot of miles. So that's bringing down the mm-hmm. demand for fuel also, or you know, the actual purchasing of fuel in the U.S. It's, it's so multifaceted. I don't think you can pin one thing in the U.S., one factor that's driving mini sales down. I think a lot of these things, like you said, Gabe, it's a giant bubble that's going to burst. And it's going to burst not just for one reason, but for a lot of reasons. A lot of people are leasing cars. Those lease cars are coming off lease. There's going to be a glut of off lease cars over the next three years. And that's going to make used cars really affordable and attractive to be able to. Yeah. And and, I mean, used cars are lasting longer, too. I think you're going to see consolidation. I think that Chrysler. I think there's something's going to happen there as far as consolidation in that yeah. group. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think Alfa Romeo sales haven't been what they expected. They they invested, I mean, literally billions of dollars right. over the past five to seven years. In, I don't know if it's going to uh, – well, uh, just the return on the investment doesn't make any sense to me. Then you've got um, Ford uh, you know, essentially being p- caught with their pants down as far as electrics and, and hybrids where GM already has full electrics on the market. Right. I think Ford's going to – straight up go buy like Faraday future or buy, mm-hmm. you know, not maybe, you know, some, some company along those lines that is, and there's another one out there that I think they actually are considering buying right now. I can't think of the top off the top of my head, but you know, I think there's going to be some big change over the next 18 months. And I think some of it will be driven by what you just said, but I think a lot of it's going to be driven by um, a change in culture around driving. You know, there's, yeah. there's a, a, there's a, a desire for a product that I, you know, that I, that I, uh, you know, I'm transported in versus a car. Right. And, uh, and I think it's, what's that? Versus owning something to give yourself the autonomy. Yeah. And I don't know. I think the owning may happen. It may take a while for the, for the own versus, versus lease or own versus rent or own versus borrow to really radically change. I think it will eventually, but I think it's pretty clear that there's a big shift happening and the the cost that it takes to manufacture cars is actually going to go down because of electric, but I think the cost of everything else is going up. So it, it'll be very interesting. So where does that leave Mini? So what Mini's trying to do is Mini is trying to put a car on dealer showrooms that is a specific price that has a set of options that Mini USA can more or less control, mm-hmm. and so they have control of their product. At a certain price point, dealers are going to be able to sell deal, you know, take money off um, that that car, bundle accessories, do all sorts of different things there. But Mini is going to be in control of the product on the showroom floor at that price, which I think is pretty interesting. I foresee, I foresee other lines. I foresee that Mini is going to look at this as a test case and potentially do away with. The BYO, you know, maybe maybe even the packages, yeah. and start to put lines out like BMW. I think it was in the article that that I wrote. So you're going to have, you know, a JCW line, a sport line, a luxury line, things like that. Well, it, and so there's going to be a different type of grouping. Okay. BMW does that now with their brand. They've they've got they package. do they do. What's interesting is they've actually they did it. Trim they up. went all in on it, and they kind of shied away a little bit. Right. Um, they're still playing with that as well, and I'm not sure if they're 
totally happy with it, to be honest with you. But for many, I think what they're trying to do, because they, what they don't want is they don't want to take away the ability to customize, but they want to make it easy for people to buy a car on the lot that they like, you right. know? And so they're trying to control inventory and control, you know, the, the, the type of inventory on lots. So well, they want to make it easier, Gabe, and, and I'm going to say they've done nothing but make it more difficult because uh, I'm going to use this for example. You walk into your showroom now. You walk into any mini showroom, and you've got the option of what, four different cars, five different cars. Um, you've got a hardtop, a two-door hardtop, a four-door hardtop, a convertible, a countryman, and a clubman. Right. Okay. And then all of those have a Cooper and a Cooper S variant and a JCW variant. Okay. So those are just, you know, power levels. You can get by with that. So let's just say there's there's five different cars there. As far as the equipment goes on these cars, it's really confusing to the consumer from from my perspective. And I hear this from people and I see this happen in the showroom. So I'm, I'm in a dealer showroom on almost a daily basis. And I see this happen every day. People come in and they get really confused because they're like, I want CarPlay. Tell me, I hear CarPlay is coming to the Mini. And they're like, well, it's only coming in the Countryman and the Club. That is the only way to get it with NAV. And they're like, oh, cool. Well, I really like this this um, plug-in hybrid Clubman. And they're like, oh, you can't get CarPlay on the hybrid club. <laughs> At least not yet. And that alone, and, and this is just... Wait, 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 Todd. Yeah? Why, why, why not? What do you mean? Uh, you can't. I'm just saying that right now. That's They can't. So, yep. oh, I bet I know why. I bet I know why. It's a different, it's literally it's a, a different it's a touch, software package. Yeah, exactly. and a touch, and a touch, exactly. and a touch screen thing, too. So, yeah. Exactly. Which, which you they can just, Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's just bad corporate planning. But, you know, I, I remember this now. It is. And, and they'll fix it eventually. But that is they'll, just... Oh, I'm sure they'll fix it probably September production, I imagine. Yeah, it's just one case scenario of this is this. But then again, so now you're, you're, you're straddling this also... The software that runs the tech in these cars is different from a hardtop to a clubman to a countryman. Okay, the clubman and the countryman with the with the big display, you have touchscreen display. But also, if you have the smaller, just the seven inch display or whatever the smaller screen is, it's run by different software and it looks different than it does in the hardtop. Now, most people aren't going to get from one car to another to to figure that out, but it's different and it's confusing and it's there's no you know, they haven't gotten to a point where there's a transition to where all these cars are the same. It doesn't matter. You need to choose the car that best fits you for size, number of doors, all wheel drive, two wheel drive, performance, whatever it is. And it is so disjointed right now. There is so much selection that I think nobody's happy and now, it's too confusing. And they're like, screw it. I'm going to Honda. I'm going to Mazda because I have three choices. Well, maybe okay? something like this uh, signature line will I, help with that, Todd. I, I don't know. I, I think I think that's I don't know I think that's like a simplified look at it because I, I really don't think it's it's that like dire but, I really but, don't like I think I so think that it's I think that it's not that dire then why are I they think that the about, problem why are they thinking about getting rid well, of well because it's it's tinkering because I mean if you can if you can increase point oh oh one percent of you know transactions then you've won. So I mean, these are these aren't giant giant changes. These are these are tinkering of like option packages, you know. And, and so I think I think that's what's happening. I don't think there's a dramatic changes happening. And they're not looking at the car and be like, oh shit, the headlights need to be in the back, you know. Like it's not like a crazy change they're making. They're just trying to trying to create something that is, I think, going to allow Mini USA to control the end product better. It's and I think they create more consistent product on the showroom floor. Right, right. It's the appleization of, of cars. You want to control everything about this, which which I get. So let's let's bring it back around to where we started here. Let the, the signature series, like we said, that, that Mini's come out with a package of cars where you get four color four color choices. It's this, and they're equipped all the same way, and that's what you get. They right. all have the same wheels, the same options, and yes. it's a little bit of a savings, about a nine hundred dollar savings if you built this on your own. And they're ready to go. All automatic transmissions. Um, boom, you're ready to go. And what what is the price of this car? Twenty four six fifty for the hardtop. Twenty five. Okay. Add a grand for the four door. And can I say this right now? I, I just did the the research on this. The average price of a car in the United States this year has topped thirty five thousand dollars. 
Well, so then this They're, twenty, this twenty-five grand Mini Cooper with the heated seats and an automatic transmission and white turn signals and nice wheels is a pretty good deal then, at it, twenty-four it, six fifty. Apparently so when you look at the average car price in the U.S. of thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Now I, it's subjective. It depends on who you are, how old you are, because I got to say Mini has kind of lost the younger people. Like I, I don't know. You say that. Like I only see young people in Minis. Like yeah, I don't. They're, they're all, I, mean, I really don't. Look you're where, seeing young people. You in yeah, R- my, my customer base is all over the board. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and I, what you're seeing, I think, is you're seeing young people in um, used Minis and R56s, R53s, R50s is what you're seeing. You're I not mean, seeing. I don't think we're seeing that many. I, in fact, I don't around town as I don't see any young people, and I consider anybody young to be my age or slightly younger driving a Clubman. Driving a new Countryman. Driving I mean, people in their 20s. Okay? Barely, so no, I, I think, not driving an F56. No, 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 no. That's 30s no, at least. All, and if you're all, seeing somebody uh, driving a Clubman, early. they're at least 40 out here on the, on the West Coast. At least but in Phoenix. So I think that, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm just saying like 30s and below. I see yeah. all the time in these cars. Basically, young urbanites in Chicago. I, I mean, there's a, when, I am, when I'm seeing minis in the street in Chicago, I would imagine, that's typically who I see. I would imagine I Alex sees cool. the same thing in San Francisco, and that's because you guys have a higher cost of living, which means you have a higher pay average than you do than, than we see in the rest of the country. So you people in the professional buildings in the big, tall, downtown, urban areas are making a little bit more money than us people out here in the burbs, so they can afford a little bit nicer car. I'm going to say this in Kansas City. Um, my well, anecdotal evidence is that most mini owners, I would say 75% plus of the mini owners, are 40 plus, if not 50 plus yeah, in age. I would agree. That is that is a majority of the owners. They're, they're older people. Yep. I mean, I look at it. I bought my first mini. I was 35. Right. Now, you know, I didn't have the chance to buy one before because I bought it the, the second year it was out. So you can't really say, you know, would I have bought it sooner? Anyway. Maybe. So anyway, let's let's get back oh. to this. Let's get back the um, the signature car. Four colors, all premium, uh, all premium colors. They're going to come with a backup camera. It's going to come with uh, all cars come with a backup camera in eighteen. Yeah, by but the way. they're they're saying it's included because it was actually it's a one thousand dollar option mm. in twenty seventeen. So it's getting included for the twenty seventeen uh, automatic I'm transmission, sorry. heated I'm seats, eight. and the victory <laughs> spoke wheels. I'm making a masturbatory gesture, which yeah. you can't see on the so, 24 650. Put say, the, so and then you put the uh, on this is, you just put the you put the little chip in that Tom put in his car for 300 bucks, the dining chip, boom, 25 grand. You get a smoking little car. Done and done. So my my perspective is 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 this. I mean, I I think it's great. I think that it's so great. There should be another immediately, and I think it should be the sport line. Or okay. signature sport line, or, or whatever. Uh, here's the thing: like, I, I think that Mini needs to. This is a this is an automatic, yep. and and I think that for a lot of folks, that's great. I think that I think Mini does need to put a little bit of effort into once they deem this a success, creating a. I think it would be a nice gesture to the more enthusiast crowd, which I know is Agreed. giant and it's probably shrinking. But I think it's I think it's an important audience, and I think they need to go out and create a, a car, a Cooper, that is. I think I even listed here that has the manual transmission. Um, I, and now I have to find it. Yeah, that's... has a manual transmission, uh, dynamic damper control, seventeen-inch wheels, and maybe stripes. Yeah. Or and this is this is key, and and actually I I missed this the first time I, I wrote it. Um, if at all possible, sports seats because yeah. those sports seats are a night and day difference. Yeah. Over the, so I was looking seats. at the Philly Mini Group over on Facebook, and the number one thing that everybody had a problem with this car was the fact that it didn't come with the that it came with an automatic transmission. Oh, what? for sure. Right. I mean, the automatic is is uh, on that car not bad, but nope. it, it it absolutely saps some enjoyment out of the car. It really does. Well, I'm going to say this, Gabe. This is unsolicited towards Mister and uh, anybody at Mini USA who listen anymore. Um, especially the new people in development. And what you said, I, I wholeheartedly agree with. And the way to do that is to look at and only t- take the statistics of cars that are customer ordered and basically customized by the customer. So take that data and look at it and make your decision 
on what people do because that's what they did with this is they looked at kind of overall data of like, well, what are people buying? They're buying the least expensive cars that are stripped down with just these very few options because the one thing that this signature series does not have is a sunroof, okay? Which kind of blew my mind because I think most people are buying a car with a sunroof. Most people want a sunroof. But anyway, that's beside the point. I think if many USA took the just the and, and I would put them enthusiasts, people who go into a dealer and they're like, I'm going to wait for a car. I don't need one today. I love this car enough that I'm going to choose what I want on it. OK, mm-hmm. these people know they've done their research and, and this is it. Or it's their second or third mini. They're like, I know what I want on the car. And I think it's a better perspective. And it's probably going to be pretty close to what Gabe said uh, of the way it's equipped. But that's the way to do it is to go. This is what people are ordering custom because this is what they want. And let's take the, the statistics of that and, and build a car and make this like the sport level version or whatever it is of the signature series. And I think it would work. I really do. Yeah. Uh, we, t- we kind of talked about that a while ago. Um, we thought that would have been a really good idea that they should have done like a sportier version of the Cooper to, to keep the price a little bit lower. I remember we talked about yeah, that. Yeah. Like I think shows back. I think they will. I think they will. I think yeah. that that's, I think there's, there's some, some, Probably some movement on that. Um, I think you're going to see some changes in 2018 that I think we'll all be happy about from what I've, what I can gather. Um, One thing, one thing I want to go back to one thing really quickly. And then I I, I do want to talk about um, my, my, uh, my club and really briefly, but uh, Todd, you're talking about confusion. And I think nomenclature has always been a confusing part of the mini lineup. Unfortunately, what if it was, If what if the Mini Cooper was the hatch, right? You, you follow me. And so, what if it was a Mini Cooper and Mini Cooper S and Mini Countryman, Mini Countryman S, Mini Clubman, Mini Con- Mini Clubman S, and, and so forth. So basically, the Cooper denoted just the hatch, which is the iconic car, and probably the four door if they keep it, and the four door, and the four door, yeah. But what, what if what if that because I I really believe that would that would help so much and I know it's a small thing, but people just understanding that little connection mm, and understanding yeah. therefore there's a wide variety of different minis. Oh, the Clubman! Have you seen the Clubman? It's not a Mini Cooper; it's a Mini Clubman. You know what I mean? It's just a slight change, but it's taking the Cooper away from a model line or sort of a, a model. You know, and, and which, putting it on an actual which product. really the Clubman isn't a Cooper anyway. Technically speaking, if you go historically, it's not speaking, at all. It historically, can be a Cooper though. Yeah, it, it, can, it can be. <laughs> no, it problem. can be. It can be. But historically speaking, the Cooper was always reserved for, you know, the one, the 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 little car. So I don't know. I, I right. Gabe, I like where you're going with that. That's a brilliant idea. So. Yeah, so just a thought. I think yeah, I think I like it. Um, that's the kind of thing that I think many should be looking at, thinking about, and maybe they are. Hmm. And can I can I say something? And this is something we don't see, and it's it's anecdotal to me because I've talked to quite a few uh, people from different dealers all over the country in the last few months, and uh, this has been confirmed to me over and over again: is that JCW's sales are insane for the last six months to a year. They have sold so many JCWs, it's not even funny. That's because it's a great car. It's blowing people's minds. I I talked to one dealer who said they sold as many JCWs in the first quarter this year as they sold in previous years, like an entire year. Wow. They they did it in like three months. That's crazy. So, And hey, as an owner of a JCW and Gabe, you're driving a JCW club in right now, I would completely wholeheartedly say it's not shocking to me whatsoever that the JCW is selling so well because it's a fantastic, phenomenal car. And, you know, I wish Alex were here to talk about it too. He's got his issues with it, but it's the best, the best mini if you want performance. So, well, okay, we, I, it's fantastic. And let's, and I do want to segue because I, I unfortunately don't have a ton of time, but I do want to segue into my um, JCW club in which yes, which please. I've had now for over three thousand miles. It's been it's been fantastic. I mean. It is. Um, I think. I think one thing that's that's definitely evident with the automatic is that it's it's not. And I've never said it was. I've always been careful on how I use my words. It's not a fast car. Right. It is. It's. It's. It's a quick car. You know. It's quick enough. Um, 
And so I think I think if there's one thing I could use is is more power or manual transmission, ironically, one of the two. <laughs> but other than that, I find the combination of brakes, tires, and dynamic damper control along with the the suspension, I mean the the overall chassis to be excellent. Um, you know, the 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 feel of it is is a premium car. It feels like every bit of an S3, for instance. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, you know, I drove my, um, my old seventies BMW 2002 recently for a couple of days mm-hmm. and then my one M and I got back at, well, my one M then my 2002 and I got back in the club and, and it just feels effortless, you know, and it's fantastic to have that feel to be honest with you at times. It makes you really, really appreciate how great modern cars are. And, right. and it's great because it engages you know, it's it doesn't have the manual, so it doesn't engage as much as it could. But it's it's fantastic in how it makes you feel. It corners phenomenally. I think there is an there is an issue with steering feel on most modern cars, um, including these minis that I still and I wrote about it a week ago. In fact, we, you know, we we certainly talk about that. Um, that I I will still call out like it's it's not quite where it needs to be. You know, there's no progressive build in, in the steering. Right. Um, the feel isn't really there in the way I'd like it to be, but it's not a rudder. It feels pretty good. I know what's going on. Hmm. Um, it, it's there's enough feedback that I can modulate, you know, the car at the limit very easily, and ultimately it's really rewarding. And so couple all of that with uh, you know an interior and technology that is fantastic to live with. Again, four doors. I put my kids back there. I put stuff back there. Luggage. It's fantastic um, to you know as as far as just like basically a little SUV or wagon, really. Um, and it's you know it's as good if not better than than my F fifty six on gas. So I, I I continue to love the car. I really am interested. I'm getting a a, a Countryman next week or a week. Um, I will be fascinated to see what it's like to live with that car. Mm. for a week versus the club and because i can't imagine wanting a countryman after i've experienced the clubman it's to me everything the countryman can be but better well, well okay. and and i can say that sales are not supporting your theory there mr Bridger. <laughs> oh well of course not i mean why why would they i mean it's you know i mean it, there's there's a there's a, a you know an absolute like um well-known desire in this country to sit up higher and to have something that feels like a go off road. We've talked, I mean, this has been known for 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. We all knew the the club and would sales would be cut off of the knees as soon as the countryman came out. Mm-hmm. That's exactly so that's happened. not, that's not a surprise at all. I mean, I think, I think I'm surprised at how well the club still selling, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I would have expected it to be selling about 30% less than it is now. So in the United States, um, outside the United States, it's selling better than they expected. Yeah. So I, I think it's, and when you look at the ratio of clubman to countrymen versus what it was with the first generation, this is clearly more successful. So I think it's it's like the BMW wagon of 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 minis here. This is the the the, the intelligent person's choice when it comes to a four door mini, from my perspective. Yeah, and I, I the thing I hear constantly from people is they don't like the looks of it, which blows my mind. I that's crazy. I, I, I like the Clubman. I think it's a great looking car. I mean, but, if you want, if you want to say that about a Mini, go look at the four door hatch. That's, mm. I agree. I, I'm right there with you, man. I I agree with you too. I can't. I do not like the looks of the four door. I think it's a a terribly proportioned car for a Mini. I from the front, it's it's fine, but the side, no. <laughs> if you're looking at it right from the front, it's horrible. It looks like every other Mini, but but yeah, it's horrible and. The Clubman, the thing is, is people come into the dealer and they look at the two of those. They don't even give the Clubman a second look anymore. Yeah. Not even a second oh, look. I, I, that's not surprising. I mean, the same with, with, with wagons, three series wagons. I mean, right. uh, think about the amount of X3s they, they, they sell at seven to 10 grand more than the wagon. It has mm-hmm. less, it, it literally has less interior space, or I think it's almost, less. it's extremely close, has less performance, less efficiency. Um, doesn't feel like a BMW like the three series doesn't, you know, th- th- it can go on and on. I mean, it's, it's in so many ways an inferior product, but it sits up higher. It has a look of something that can go on a, on a trail if, if need be. And 
uh, somehow people feel more comfortable with it. Which is insane. You know? I, I think buyers in the U.S. must have inferiority complexes or something. Oh, like, which is, I think, Which is why they need bigger, more giant cars. And all of us, it blows our minds because we're used to driving minis for the last 15 years. And I'm like, I just don't get it. And I mean, even Gabe, your, your 1M is a small car by comparison. Oh, yeah, for sure. Very small. Well, I, and I and I'll just I'll just pivot into what I wrote last week, which was, um, you know, is Mini forgetting to be Mini? You know, are they forgetting to know what it really means? And and it's not necessarily about weight because I think these cars, you know, I think the F fifty six has done a really good job of keeping weight down. The Clubman is a different story, and it's become quite a bit different of a car, and so it does it is bigger. Um, but you know, it, I think it's about proportion and about feel. Uh, it's about steering. Frankly, when it comes down to it, it's about steering and engine responsiveness. And if you could fine tune that, I think you're going to have a car across the board that feels a little bit more mini like than they do right now. And I think that's, that's another, that's definitely another part of it. That's not going to solve club and sales, but I do think that, you know, bringing certain hallmarks of that R 53 R 50 into this range a little bit more than they are now, I think would help. I think for some folks kind of crystallize what the brand should quote, use in air quotes here feel like. Right. Now you missed PB said like, like uh, the last show Gabe is that, you know, after driving his Roadster for a while, he thinks that's the, the like almost the perfect mini. I yeah. DB, I agree. I think the JCW Roadster I had is is, is still to this day the best mini I've ever yeah. lived with. Yeah, I mean, I haven't spent any quality time with an F fifty six, but I mean, to this point, uh, I still think the R fifty nine, the you know, the, the 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 Roadster and the Coupe, two of the best minis ever made. That's awesome. I think the I think the R fifty six has the engine uh, while it may not last as long, um, rubs quicker and feels more like a mini should. Yeah. Um, I do think the steering feel and feedback in the new car is slightly better. Yeah. But you know, in the in the Roadster, I think it's so things are so visceral around you right. that you d- notice less. It's yeah. it just feels awesome. It really is. Well, and I, I think it's subjective too about the F fifty six Gabe because I'm used to driving mine with the JCW Pro suspension slammed all the way, you know, really tuned very well and eighteen inch wheels. The combination of those two things makes the car feel extremely responsive, as responsive as my 2003 or my uh, 2006 GP. It, it feels as responsive as that. And but if you drove those cars back, I, I, I agree with you, but there's like a knife edge that those cars had. Right, right. That is 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 in the geometry of the suspension itself and, uh, you know, in, in the in the car, the fact that it's it's. You know, just a, a smaller package. I agree with you. I think I think those cars, like your car, for instance, and and a lot of a lot of people just put down the F fifty six because it looks bloated. You right. know, it's got a big nose. It's this and that. And the reality is, if it was if it wasn't for the safety equipment they had to add and and the, the options they've made standard now, it'd be lighter. Well, than and the R fifty three. Also, I think that the two things make this car feel different in handling. For those people who really notice this, the track is wider and the wheelbase is longer. Those two mm-hmm. things alone That's so true. totally change the handling of a vehicle and the feel that, you know, let's say I, I drove uh, an R53 from 2003 until really last year. So 13 years and you get used to that feeling. And then it was a little different going to the, the F56. But like I said, the track is wider and the wheelbase is slightly longer. And those two things really smooth out the car and make it feel less visceral. OK, mm-hmm. and say even the Roadster, which is so tight and so responsive mm-hmm. and feels really nice to drive. And that car is just really stiff is the thing. That's, that's yeah. the stiffest. Car. Yeah, that's actually that is that is the stiffest money to this to, to date. Right. Actually. That's, right. What she, right, that's what she I, said. Unfortunately, I have to I have to I have to retire. I have a very early morning and a, a date with a plane. Excellent. Gabe, thanks again for joining us. Mr. Gabe Bridger, motoringfile.com, everybody. Thank you again, sir, very much. All right. Cheers, guys. Yep. Yep. Okay. And nobody died. So we're in good shape. (laughs) And nobody got hurt. No death to anybody. Yikes. Okay. Um, Anyway, that was again, that was Gabe from uh, motoringfile.com. Go ahead, Todd. 
this is this is the problem with our show is that we we don't get together that much now we get together a couple times a month and with gabe a, a little less than that and we could just go on and on we're all just nerds about minis yeah right we really are and we get so we get so excited about it and we can just go on and and on and on and i hope everybody enjoys listening to our you know, diatribes about this. I certainly hope so. Meaning well. stuff about cars. Yeah, before we, before we go on, let me tell you guys about one of the other sponsors here really quick. Let's remind uh, you guys about Craven Speed, CravenSpeed.com. Go over there. Check out the fine-looking crew. Uh, there's a big picture of all of them there on the uh, homepage. It's a very good-looking, handsome crew at CravenSpeed.com. Go over there look at them. Um, go over and look at all the things that Craven Speed makes. You guys own minis because you're listening to the show or you just like the show. But they have stuff for every, uh, like for almost every other make of cars. Audis all the way to Volvos, everything except for what, Todd? Aston uh, Martins. No Aston Martin parts at Craven Speed. Yep, Remember, Aston we talked Martin. about that last last time. Uh, no Aston Martin parts over Craven Speed, but everything else. And just all manner of different things depending on what car you have. So let's say that uh, we have a BMW. You want the Platypus, Platypus license plate mount? You can get that for the BMW. You can also get a stubby antenna. You can get an ODB2 connector. You can get all kinds of things. Go over there, check all this stuff out. If you have a Mini, of course you're going to go to Craven Speed because you need the uh, phone holder. Because you live in a state where you can't hold your phone in your car anymore. You're going to get the one from Craven Speed. Trust me. Done. Done. You're going to get the shorty license plate, uh, shorty uh, stubby antenna. You're going to get the platypus mount. You're going to get all the things for your car that Craven Speed makes that are awesome because they're awesome. And, of course, that's our friends over at Craven Speed. And when you're placing an order, really cool things if you can make sure you say thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We really appreciate that. So do they. They, of course. Our friends over at Craven Speed, CravenSpeed.com. Check them out, please. Boom. Boom. What else? Uh, uh, crickets. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, lost. I'm really detected. quick, really quick. And this is, this is something that's starting to become kind of an annoyance to us. Uh, our man, Chad. Chad over to Troy Tune, DetroitTune.com. Chad, you got this mailer. Was that this week? Last week, you got a piece of mail from your oh, local. Yeah. You got a piece of mail from your local mini dealer, saying, "Oh, hey, you need to bring your Mini Cooper in for service." And this yeah. mailer that it's got a picture of an R50 on the lift, <laughs> and it's using all of the old design stuff. Well, it was it was funny because we were working on a customer's car, and we just put a battery in his car. Wow. No big deal putting a battery in yeah, do yeah. it all the time just connect two things put the battery in done there was no like oh well we'll put the battery in in like six hours it'll be fine no it 20 minutes maybe sure the whole time sure well it burned out the frm and uh-huh. that's kind of a new thing on the minis and it's like all it wasn't really like discharging anything it should have been quick no problems so we take the car to the dealer. Yep, no problem. No problems. It's free. We put the piece in. Well, now we're on their mailing list. So they said that we needed to get our countryman service. I was like, well, <laughs> obviously nobody's checking their mailing list because it says Detroit tuned. And we also have a R56 and an R50 and a R53 and, you know, nine different vehicles within the Detroit tuned moniker that all go to the dealer from time to time based on national recalls, free things, because, you know, hey, sure, I can fix it, but if I don't have to pay for it, it's always good. So, you know, I'm looking at this flyer, and it's saying that my car needs service, and it's showing me a 2002 Mini <laughs> that is 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah. And it's also telling me for a car I don't even own, and it's also giving me coupons for something that is not related to the service that it says it needs to do. So it's like, hey, your meaning is an oil change, but by the way, here's a coupon for a detailing. Yeah. Plus, it's using <laughs> the old what they call CI, um, right. which is essentially the old design. So it's got the the the, the box. And on black with the the uh, aerial the, the old mini font, sort of like yeah. What is it, Todd? You just linked this up. Oh, for mini all, for my mini all, card dot com. All of mini financial services. So if you have a mini card, if you have a loan 
from uh, Mini Financial Services or the yes. owner's lounge, which you have to go through that for your loan, you still literally, I'm not kidding, if you have really? uh, if you finance your car through Mini, yeah. you have to go to the owner's lounge to log on. And it still has all the flash not, stuff in there too? I'm not kidding, yeah. And Ugh. so look at, the, look at the link I just sent there. So the Mini Financial Services... Like for the uh, for the mini Visa card, if you have, which is a great card, by the way. Mm. I, I have one. Um, I use it for points, but the interest rate's kind of high, so I don't carry a balance. But anyway, it's still black with the old logo and red borders, and the picture on the homepage is an R fifty six. Yes, it is. Yeah, right. Huh. <laughs> which you know kind of made me a, think is like, well, they are, the cars are obviously more up to date. Uh, the the customer base sometimes will uh, go between the brands. Somebody that did have an, maybe an R50 goes to a R53, maybe went to an R56, maybe went to an R58, uh, i.e. Don. You know, he's gone through four yeah. different minis yeah. um, and but have gone to maybe even the F cars. So, but there are a lot of mini owners that have never gone to any of those cars and then they look at this Whoa. advertising and they're like but that's not my car what is that car i've never seen that before like uh, but i i, I think i'm confusing i don't know i'm gonna go back to what gabe said most people don't know the difference the enthusiasts know the difference but your average consumer now your average mini buyer for the last five years they really can't tell them apart and r56 yep. from an r53 from an f56 we can, and we think they're, you're, you've got to be on crack if you can't. <laughs> but in the defense of some of those people, they just can't tell the difference. And I just discovered, this has happened within the last 30 days, because I checked it a month ago. Um, the Owner's Lounge has now updated. Yes, I just it's, noticed that. I can't, first of all, I can't believe I just tried to log into the Owner's Lounge. My account's locked. But yeah, the Owner's Lounge is still there. <laughs> it's only taken them uh since 24 this this changeover happened in 2014 so yeah. three years <laughs> well congratulations i'm being sarcastic here i'm sorry people at mini but come on uh, it, uh, hey it's great that you did it and i know how hard it is to change web stuff i mean db you know especially yeah how much time it takes to create something where everything works yeah. and to test it and uh they finally did it so now your financial services only your mini card is left with the old ci yes <laughs> you the new yes. owner's lounge, if you have a loan from uh, Mini USA, is now updated. It looks oh, beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, this is just ugh, craziness. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's just weird that they just can't seem to. It's been three years. How can they not get this together and make this match? You know? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think it's interesting because all you have to do is take that exact same picture. And you remove one car and you put the other car in there. It's very photoshopable. It's yeah. it's a fifteen minute process, you and know. they take they take all of these things and they just throw them out. And they, here's nope. your new ones done. Yeah, you know, obviously they've changed the logo uh, a while ago, but some of the new the old logos are still surfacing. You know, it's hard when you're a company like, like say their dealer's been around for fifteen years using the same stuff. Right. They use them at, yeah. The same collateral for 15 years. It's right. really hard for them to change, and it, it's been three years, and they still haven't done. Not all of them done it. Hence, Chad, you get a mailer in the mail, physical piece of paper, mail, right? Yeah. That, oh yeah. That says that still the old identity with the black logos and everything. And that piece of mail probably cost maybe sixty-seven cents, give or take. Yeah, even with postage, even with mass printing, uh, we'll we'll just call it a dollar for you know sake of argument. So they've sent that to everybody in the I, I would bet Michigan area. So maybe a thousand people. So there was a thousand dollars that just poof yeah. went out. You know, regardless of whether Mini USA paid that or the dealers paid that or, you know, one of three dealers, you know, the wasteful spending that gets you to this point of, oh, do we keep the brand? Do we change the brand? You know, 
somebody needs to really take charge and be like, look, this is the way it is. And this is what we do. And this is how we're going to do it. And, and that was what Jim McDowell's plan was. And as soon as he's gone, it's kind of all falling apart. So it's, it's interesting to see the whole dynamics of it. So, and, and yeah. it's funny because here I'm I'm being a little distracted by. Uh, I'm trying. By I'm this, actually but, logging into the. I'm actually logging into the owners zone for the first time in like a hundred years. I know. I went to financial services to see what the value of my car is, and guess what? what? I have equity in my car, dude. Can you guys believe this? That's, After a year of wow. owning it, this is this is shocking. That my car val- my car payoff is like. Twenty five grand, twenty five thousand one hundred dollars, and I just did a Kelly Blue Book, and they say my trade in is twenty eight four. I could have three grand. That's not going to be at a dealer because I take it to the dealer, and they're going to go, "We'll give you ten thousand dollars for your car." Right. Yeah. <laughs> but well, if I go to Max, I'm Carmax, actually. Am I right? I'm really sorry, but I'm actually I'm in I'm in the mini owners <laughs> lounge. We've we've lost DB now. He's going to the forums. <laughs> Do they still exist? No, That's they're the gone. Okay. They are gone. There's my mini magic account update profile, 2003 Mini Cooper S. Yeah, this needs to be updated. Yikes. Yep, there you Pretty go. Old. Tell them you own a roadster now. Put your VIN in. <sighs> yeah, I'll get, I'll get right on that. Anyway. <laughs> what's that going to do for me? Well, I, you know, the, the gist of uh, the it's, story actually, is. Is, is that you know, they're really inconsistent with their marketing message across all the channels. Well, well well, that, but I mean, everything that we've been talking about for the last, uh, you know, year, the last, you know, 15 podcasts, the last, you know, 30 podcasts, you know, obviously, what is Mini really trying to tell their customer base? Uh, how do we unify the whole idea, the whole branding, the whole, you know, look, the, the you know, because we released that, you um, Mini had updated their logo and they did all these things and Three years ago, you know, awesome, yeah, exactly, you know, a ton of time ago, right? So, how, why are they still using that's our some of point. this it's, old stuff? It still it seems disjointed, and I think that's the, the overarching point of the story is that it seems kind of uh, disjointed and, and incongruous to the average consumer. They're like, wait, why? This all kind of looks kind of different. Some of it's retro, different. Some of it's new. And yeah, they just haven't gone in full force. And part of that, I, I still say, is because they are they don't have a current agency of record. I mean, they kind of technically do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But their old uh, agency of record, BSSP, resigned like back in February, I think. January. Right. February. They're still staying on on an as-needed basis. But uh yeah, until we get a new agency who's going to come in and start laying the law down and think, listen, everybody's got to start using this. Stop sending out these mailers. It's right, right. Like, you know. Yeah. Well, and that's something that, uh, you know, Brian could touch on, but, yeah. you know, not being on here tonight. But he did say this, like, you know, there are people that are supposed to be watching out for this, but there are people that are right. not looking out for that. So, yeah, interesting. Interesting. What do you guys think? Comments are open. Click over to whiteroofradio.com. Leave it on the show notes. Just saying. Yeah, when's the la- tell us when's the last time you went to the mini owner's lounge. <laughs> when's the last time you logged into the owner's lounge? You know, you guys remember the owner's lounge used to be it because it was um, it was, um, it was a MCO and yep. the owner's lounge. And you needed somewhere to host your photos so that you could share pictures over at uh, MCO, Mini Cooper Online, which became DAM, North American Motoring. Um, so you need to have somewhere. You, nobody had websites back then. It's like, oh, my God, where am I going right. to put my pictures? So I would upload my photos to the owner's lounge, and the owner's lounge allowed hot linking. So then I would link the images over to the threads over at, over at NAMP. Oh, good times. You know, you know what, what would be that actually back interesting before to had a see zillion is, websites. you know, how many listeners actually get um, advertisements from their dealers or competitor dealers around their area and do they make sense to you Mm -hmm. as well as do you utilize them because sometimes they do give some great coupons in those mailers and i've gotten them before but obviously i'm not going to be taking my car there for a you know 69 dollar oil change because it still is less for me but um you know do you feel that Mini is trying to market you or target you correctly. Oh, that's a really and that good question, would be a, a great 
email. Yeah. I mean, it could be a, a quick yes, no. You know, put subject line, you know, mini, mini targeting or something, you know, marketing, something like that. Uh, say, you know, I don't feel that mini is trying to keep me as a customer. I, I don't feel that uh, they're the dealers value my opinion, you know, whatever. Or maybe my dealer loves me and my dealer is bent over backwards for everything I need. What do you think as a listener that Mini is seeing you as a customer? Yeah, click back over to whatyourafraid.com. Leave us a note there in the show notes. You know what, really quick, before we're, because we're about done here, but I just want to say something that's really interesting to me. Because we keep beating up Gabe on the whole hipster thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys notice that, of course, the the image that, that Gabe used for the Mini USA introduces the entry-level Mini Cooper signature line. It's on, it's a Mini that's not only does it have a brick wall as a background it's on a brick road and i think there's like a, a metal warehouse door on the side and like some old type type stuff it's as hipster as you as you could possibly get it's there's got to be some distressed wood somewhere it's almost it's right? almost like it's staged oh yeah there's distressed wood it's the uh, the arch <laughs> of the door it's almost like it's staged like this was shot like at the warner lot or something you know <coughs> Anyway, I thought that was funny. It just struck it just struck me as odd. But um, I guess we can be done. Are we done? You guys have anything else? Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm out of nah. breath. I'm good. All right, very cool. So, gang, one more time. Let's remind you. Uh, if you need, to, you need to click over to the Patreon page, to the clubhouse over there. Um, uh, some really hot news from coming out of Detroit, too, and you're going to get the, the exclusive coming at the Black Roof Radio. Uh, it's news that everybody else is going to hear about in about two weeks, but you want to know about it now. You want the true insider scoop, and it's cool news. Just click over, like I said, 50 cents a buck or show, boom, you're in. That's all you got to do. Go check that out. And then, of course, you know, if you're minutes from Detroit Tune, you're using Chat as your shop anyway, right? Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com. That's where you're going to get all the things. Um, you're buying all your Craven Speed stuff from Chat over to Detroit Tune. If you're within, you know, shouting distance of the shop, that's where you're going for all of your repairs and service anyway, right? Right? And thank you. DetroitTune.com. Thank you very much. And, of course, uh, don't forget motoringbadges.com. Todd, how are we coming on boot protector strip for the not, – not for the new Countryman. That's not ready yet, right? No, that's correct. Just for the new Clubman. But – And for the R60, for the old Countryman. What is also done oh. is – drum roll. Another drum roll. Uh, and this is – actually, this is crazy that it has been requested so much. The – Bumper, rear bumper protection strip for the uh, uh, R59. Really? Which is uh, Roadsters, yes. Yo, yep. yeah. Yeah, okay. yep. So I've got to get the photographs online because it's hard to sell something without a picture of like what it looks like on yeah. the car. And since we have a black car, it makes it kind of hard. But uh, I'm going to get a good picture I of think it. a black bumper protection strip for Hank would be brilliant. There you go. I will send one your way, sir. I'm going to have to need one of those. That's actually a really good idea. I'm surprised. Yeah. So you need a bumper protection strip for your Mini. You need, you've got a, uh, you get the new Clubman. You have a first-generation Countryman. Done. Motoringstripes.com. You have a new Countryman. Yeah, just hold on. Todd's still working out the engineering. Get that going for you, too. If you are looking for the White Roof Radio Sunroof Delete Kit because you live west of the Rockies and you want your air conditioning to work again, go over to motoringstripes.com. you got to use do the motoringstripes.com hack. Go to the contact form link at the bottom of the page. Shoot Todd an email. It's going to cost you 100 bucks. Tell him what year, what color roof. He will send it out to you. You install it yourself. It takes like, I don't know, 10 minutes to put a sunroof delete kit on, Todd? 15 minutes? Uh, probably 30. Okay, half an hour. Boom. Yeah. Super simple. Super simple. I mean, I could do it. In fact, I think I have. It's really easy. And like I said, it makes sure it actually makes your air conditioning work. You need yes. this. Go get it done. Motoringstripes.com. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Otherwise, uh, now, I do believe we are done. Uh, I want to thank everybody again for listening. I want to thank everybody for checking out Ride Bikes Radio as well. Very awesome. Thank you so much. And for all the nice words in iTunes, for both of the shows, we work very hard to provide a fine level of entertainment value uh, for your dollar here underneath the white roof. Just saying. Anyway, this is part of the show, gang. <laughs> I like to make the funny clicking sound. Then I say... Questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us feedback at whiteroofradio.com. Until next week, this is DB. I'm done.
Cheers. See ya. Thank you.